Hey folks, so today I thought we'd have a look at the effects of climate change. So this was um, one of my lovely subscribers asked if I could do this and I thought, I don't know why I haven't, it's a great idea. Uh, it's a common question to come up in GCSE geography, so let's just get this one done. So I thought what we could do instead of um, anything super complicated, is just write the effects of climate change in the middle of your page and then we're going to do this kind of mind map style. Okay, with lots of arrows, we're gonna see how we go. Okay, just cracking on. So when I think of climate change and I think about the effects of climate change, the first thing I think about, apart from the planet heating up, is sea level rise. And that's obviously due to increased temperatures and the melting of the Arctic and Antarctic ice sheets. And sea level rise is a really big issue it's going to cause a lot of problems into the future, particularly for coastal communities, which I, I live in a coastal community, but also there are literally millions, if not billions of people around the world that are affected by this. Um, the main issue people have is going to be flooding, flooding of businesses, uh, flooding of homes, flooding of schools, just absolute carnage really because although it's a sm it's a slowly evolving problem you know it is rising and it's rising every single year so we know that this is just going to keep happening um, and unfortunately we can even predict into the future just how bad it's going to get um, and it will be a case of relocating people rather than trying to protect the coast because it's just not going to be possible to build a big enough wall um, the other thing I think of when I think of um, the effects of climate change is increased storms. So storms aren't completely unusual. We do expect uh, to see storms uh, every winter, of course, you know, it's, that's normal, but we aren't expecting to see the numbers of storms we have at the moment. And the other thing that we, we are seeing more of is a higher intensity of storms. So whereas before you know, you might have, let's say on average, I don't know, five hurricanes a year, we might see seven, eight, nine, ten hurricanes, you know, just, there's more of them, um, so higher frequency and higher intensity, so, and higher frequency, there we go, um, and just, let's just put, I don't know, a big storm cloud in there, some rainfall, as well so yeah more more rain and of course that links to flooding as well so we're starting to see more floods because of that um and you know we have to remember of course with things like tropical storms that's really severe wind speeds as well and you know real big damage to buildings um on the other end of the scale so away from the storms we're also starting to see uh, increased wildfires or bushfires, basically fires that are natural, they might have been caused by lightning or um, they may even have been caused by humans but the conditions for the wildfires, the dry scrubland and things like that is is becoming more and more common because of a lack of rainfall in some areas so I know that sounds weird because you know if we're having hotter temperatures why are we having more rain but some areas are having droughts some areas are having storms some areas are having floods some are having different conditions it just depends where you are in the world so yeah increased let's just draw a flame um so yeah increased wildfires uh, so these are like candle flames, but you know you can draw some trees in there as well, getting burnt by the flames. Um, this is really sad. I mean, this flames proper wildfires move very very fast, almost faster than you can drive away from them in a car, um, and they will engulf everything in their path. So they are super super disrupt disrupt. <laughs> Let me get my words out: disruptive and destructive. There we go. Um, and again, we are seeing, um, you know, a higher frequency of these and a higher intensity. Now, if you come to answer a question on these in, in a geography exam, please use these words about the frequency, so there being more of them and the intensity and them being stronger. Now, 
linked, I suppose, a little bit to those wildfires are the increased droughts that we're seeing. So a drought, if you're not sure, is a period of time with a lack of water, a lack of rainfall. So if I draw some rain droplets and then essentially we're just going to put a big cross through them. So a drought is uh, a really big issue actually um, and this is cause, causing something called desertification. Desertification, there we go. Um, and that's where healthy land with trees and shrubs and things is becoming desert. And it's becoming desert because there is just such a lack of rainfall for such a long time. Um, and this is linking to uh, another issue that's caused by climate change, um, which is where we are basically struggling to grow food. So what we're going to put there is a loss of um, crop yields so a yield is like the amount of it uh, amount of crops so a loss of crop yields that's where we're losing crops because they are really just drying up they're damaged by the conditions the weather conditions and those two are very much linked because when there are those droughts farmers can't just find water in some places in the world there just isn't reservoirs and, and enough water for these crops um and then because of the loss of crop yields, you know, we're having kind of food production issues. So big concerns over how we're going to feed ourselves as a human race uh, in the future. And, and what they're doing as a result of that, and I, I talk about this in another video, is uh, they're looking at kind of genetically modified crops. They're trying to find what they call drought resistant crops, which are special breeds of seed that can survive conditions without too much rainfall um, because it's you know it's not people who eat special seeds for their food it's bread it's pasta it's rice it's it's everyday food that you you and I want to eat and you know it's these crops that we rely on that are struggling okay and are set to struggle more in the future now Moving on, let's keep going. We've got, um, over here, we are going to look at the next one, which is, I always think of is habitat loss. Whenever you watch those incredible David Attenborough documentaries, you know, all of these things, these storms, the sea level rise, the wildfires, the droughts, they're all affecting our natural biodiversity and reducing that habitat loss, which, you know, you might think, oh, you know, we're just losing a tree, we're losing some grasses, we're losing kind of natural environment. But what we're losing is the home for wildlife. And because of that, we are seeing a real huge decline in our natural sort of biodiversity. And biodiversity basically means let's get this in biodiversity there we go so that biodiversity is plants and animals and it's the range of species that we have on earth and it's what makes our earth so amazing and it's what helps our ecosystem be as strong as it is because you know it's so varied and so incredible um so you know it's it's everything from you know like bees and you know plants and things like that and these different species that we rely on to create our ecosystem that we then you know are a part of as well not separate from but a part of so yeah habitat loss a drop in biodiversity really all of these are so so significant but when you see them on the page like this it, it kind of brings it to mind doesn't it just how significant it is Okay, a couple more and then we're done. So another one I suppose that oh, it gets the headlines, doesn't it, is the melting of, I don't know if I can draw an iceberg. I think I've kind of done that possibly the wrong way around, I'm not sure. But um, anyway, I'll write iceberg and then you know it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, the melting of icebergs into the sea and basically the melting of the polar ice caps themselves, those huge, huge areas of ice that exist in the Arctic and Antarctica. 
um, the massive, you know, frozen glaciers, those frozen rivers of ice and Greenland, you know, all these amazing, amazing places um, that are basically melting. And, and I'm just going to call those polar, so melting of polar landscapes. Now, they themselves are a habitat for creatures, whether that's penguins or polar bears. Um, but in a sort of a more sinister way, when we lose the sea ice there, uh, it leads to even greater warming because ice is white and white ice reflects the sun. I don't know if I can, maybe I can just draw an arrow. So it goes kind of back to the sun. It sends ultraviolet radiation back out. But the sea, so when it melts, let's just say into the sea, um, the sea is like a darker color, isn't it? It's kind of blue, darker blue. Um, the sea absorbs basically um, UV ultraviolet radiation and it it sort of takes it in and it warms itself up and it makes the sea warmer and because it's darker it just absorbs more heat so it actually it's like when we lose trees in deforestation the ice is already doing this incredible job like trees take in carbon and give out oxygen ice reflects the sunlight but then when we lose the ice it becomes it's still here but it's in the form of water it's now almost increasing climate change it's making it worse because it's darker so yeah it's a it's like a double-edged sword okay we just have one more to go now the last one um we do this i teach about this in year seven actually at my school it's um some of our more fragile ecosystems when we're thinking about the effects of climate change we're talking in broad terms about all of these but um some of our most fragile ecosystems are already going and they're already, well, already gone. I mean, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia is, I believe, I believe we might have it for another 50 years if we're lucky. So it's a very fragile ecosystem because coral uh, basically can't deal with the change in temperature. And when the sea gets warmer, it dies. Okay, so fragile ecosystems like coral reefs uh, are dying. Can't really put it any clearer than that. So, um, I mean, scientists are doing amazing things. They're looking at special coral. It's kind of like a super coral that can survive in hotter temperatures. They're trying to replant sections of it and, you know, keep people away from it. But... Uh, yeah, I don't know if I can draw some coral. It's kind of a wiggly shape, but it's um it's home. It's home to so many fish. It's home to kind of uh, nurseries of fish. So by the coral going, we're losing, you know, really significant habitat for all of our marine life. And remember, there's more fish uh, living in the Great Barrier Reef or in Australia than there are kind of more any other species on earth you know we have more it's it's in the most rich and biodiverse area um, now most of this is affecting people and nature but there's just one more and I'm just wondering where I can uh, let's put it in off increased droughts um, we do have to mention this one we can't can't stop without it it is our water supply okay and our our water supply is at risk now, when I say water supply, I am referring to the water cycle, and I am, you know, thinking about our drinking water, the water we use to, to wash, to wash our clothes, to cook with, um, and it's already at risk. It's not like in the future it might be at risk. It is already there uh, because of these higher temperatures. So I've written water supplies at risk with higher temps. Um, so basically. Yeah, the reservoirs that exist around the world, like Lake Mead in uh, in America, um, are dropping. Their levels are dropping. And we're seeing more and more hose pipe bans. We are seeing more and more farmers struggling to water their crops, which, of course, links back to food production. So actually that one goes right back there as well. 
Um, this is going to be a much bigger problem in the future. They have got to figure out new ways to make seawater drinkable because at, at a reasonable cost, because this is going to be what wars will be fought over in the future. Water supply, not oil. So yeah, this, I mean, I hope this, this landscape changes and I, and I hope, you know, I really, really strongly hope that this is a situation that's going to improve and that governments are going to act much faster um, and individuals. But yeah, if, it, if climate change continues, then this is absolutely what's on the cards. And um, yeah, thank you for the person who requested this video and I hope it's useful.